Yo, what's up, guys? I'm back. Got a review for you. This time with this 94 rated Ultimate Dynasty Harlan card. Now, there's a specific reason why I bought this card. It's because I've been watching a lot of the pro tournaments recently, and they've all been using this card, obviously, before the team year came out. Um, obviously, because he's 6 foot 5 and aerial plus, it's a very effective way to play FIFA right now. So he's six foot five with a high medium work crease. He's got the four star skills, three star weight. You find his preferred foot obviously be that left foot. Now on alternatives, he can play the striker and the centre forward, which is a little bit annoying in my opinion. He doesn't have any variety because there's a few strikers that have the same like that. So you, you will have to drop one. Now on stats, he's got ninety three pace, ninety six shooting, the seventy two passing, the eighty six shooting, and the ninety four physicals. On paper, looks like a very very deadly striker. I decided to go the engine chem style just to boost that pace, passing, and dribbling just that little bit more. Now, play style, he doesn't have many, but he has effective ones. He has power headed, he has quick step, which is very nice for a tall man, acrobatic, and the main one itself, aerial plus. Now, if you do enjoy the review or want to see more, please do subscribe. It really does mean a lot to my channel, and I'll see you after positive and negatives. Peace. So, what's my other thoughts now? If you don't know how the segment works, I put say what's good, what's bad, what you should and what you shouldn't do, just so you utilize the card as best as possible. Now, you're probably thinking I use the exact same clips for the Team of the Year one as I did for this um, Ultimate Dynasty, but you're very wrong on that one. I used that Team of the Year one, I fell in love and wanted to have this um, Ultimate Dynasty's one. So, I bought it for about 1.6 million. Now, on stats, uh, the 4 star skills, 3 star weak foot is a little bit annoying, I'd rather it be the other way around because on a big man like this, especially with that agility, you're not really going to be using that skills a lot, so it's a bit frustrating and that's the way around the EA have done it, it's especially since he's not really a skill over in real life. Now the pace of me, exceptional, once he gets going, this guy is an absolute freight train and you're never going to catch him, especially go hand in hand with that strength, he is very, very exceptionally good with that and honestly he's so, so fast once he's gone. 
Now, he's shooting for me very, very consistent. Obviously, that weak foot, at times, you would have a bit of issue. But on that strong foot, it's very, very dependable. 99 finishing, 94 composure, 97 shot power. Really good. The trailers in itself were decent as well. I just would recommend staying away from that uh, weak foot at times unless you specifically have to. Now, the passing for me is very, very mediocre. He can do the simple stuff and that's about it. And even then, it's not really amazing. So I would recommend you just holding L2, getting a bit of the strength off and then passing it to someone um, in an open position because he's not really the best of passers. Now, the drilling for me, he, again, he isn't really the most agile or nimble card being 6 or 5. It's not his type of card to be a passer or a dribbler. But with that being said, he does have good reactions, has good composure. Ball control is good as well. You just need to be careful him being 6 or 5 with that agility. Now, this is the main reason I bought this card. 99 jumping, 98 head nasty with aerial plus. He is an absolute dominant card in the air. Van Dyke's got no chance. None of these centre backs have any chance unless they have aerial plus against him. Especially when you pair it up with someone that's got whip pass like Alfonso does or Havertz or Basher or something like that. A lot of the full backs have whip pass now, so you're not short of options. Do that to the back post of Holland and they've got no chance. He's so, so physically dominant. Now, the stamina for me, although it's not amazing, he'll be able to last you 90 minutes with the right instructions. Um, I would recommend you sort him off after 90, though, because he's not going to last any longer than that. And his strength and aggression are both insanely good in itself. This is why he could be such a good hold-up striker. So, on to my other scores now. If you don't know how the segment works, I pretty much like each in your stats. So got pace shooting, passing on a score out of 10, and I also give him an overall score and a value of coins. So first me is going to do that pace. Now over the pace, I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. Now purely because that sprint speed is really, really good. But that acceleration isn't really amazing. This is why he has a quick step to try and like get him through and go a little bit faster. Because obviously the taller players don't accelerate as fast. But when he does, he's insanely fast through and go. Now the shooting for me... On his left foot, very, very dependent on the right foot, sometimes inconsistent, sometimes good. It's, it's like all three-star weak foots. They're mediocre. Now, over the shooting, I'm going to give it a... I'm going to give it a 9, nine out of 10, I would say. Purely because that weak foot, I can't give any higher. But on that left foot, it's very, very strong and dependable. Now, the passing for me, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. Purely because it's just very, very average. I know the short pass and the vision are okay. But with that being said, they, they're just pretty average stats, in my opinion. Now, the drilling for me, the ones that matter most on a tall card like this is the composure, the ball shot, and the reactions, and he does have all three in abundance. But with that being said, he's not the most smooth and agile card, so overall for this, I'm going to give him a 7 out of 10 for dribbling. Now, the physicals for me, he's got good head and he got good jumping, got really good strength, good aggression. The stamina is 81, which lets it down a little bit. So over this, I'm going to give it a 9.5 out of 10. He's a very, very dominant card in the air and a very, very physical card. It's just that stamina is a little bit low to be giving it a 10 out of 10. So, overall score on Valley of Queens. So, overall score for me then, I'm going to give it a 9.1 out of 10. I do think it's a good card and a very, very fun card to use, especially if you've got like a bat pit to go with him. He's very, very dominant to hold off. It's a bit, little bit of a different dynamic to your team, which a lot of people don't know how to deal with, which obviously the meta is normally like smaller cards, um, step homes and like that. But when you have a card like this, when you can launch it in the air to pass it down with a header or even score, it's a very different dynamic to it and people do struggle to play against it. So, on value for coins, I'm going to give him an 8 out of 10. He is 1.8 million, which is very, very expensive. But I do think he is a very good card for that price. So if you are looking for like that aerial threat, use either him or Courtois. Very, very good cards for it. And honestly, if you got a whip pass with it, game over. But that's all for my view. As always, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please do subscribe. Like I said at the start, it really does mean a lot to my channel. Now, if you want to see on a particular, let me know down in the comments down below. Obviously, I'll try and get around to them if I can. But I've got nothing more to say. See you next to you and peace out, guys.